Entrepreneurship Rush Hour once again. We have a very special guest together with us, and of course, Chris in the house. Thank you very much, Chris. Pleasure. Yeah, Chris, would you like to tell the audience more about yourself, please? Sure. Well, we I run a company called Black Marketing. Uh, we do LinkedIn for entrepreneurs across the world, based in Singapore. We employ 25 people, mostly Singaporeans, to actually deliver content marketing, personal branding, new business generation, and company branding on LinkedIn. <laughs> you guys got it? Right. Uh, so that was a really good pitch. That really good. What's your personal take on this start fever that's going on hot in particularly Singapore? Uh, a lot of them shouldn't be existing. But <laughs> too many startups just, haven't got any too money. Many stuff, yeah. <laughs> too many haven't got too much money and there's too many grants coming in from the yeah, government to yeah. basically subsidize startups which basically shouldn't exist. Yes. Mm. What's your take on that? Uh, in normal circumstances, yes. I'd say it's places like Hong Kong and Australia, yes, but I don't think it's Singapore because the Singapore government gives so much money A lot of money to startups. And there's a great article in the Financial Times just two weeks ago said that startups yeah. in Singapore actually last longer than anywhere else <laughs> because they just basically they don't die, yeah. they die quickly. They don't die quickly, they Correct. die slowly because yeah. they basically have so much money from the government to so support them yeah. when actually in other places they would have died and they would then have to reiterate and they have to come back to life as some of the mass nation. But the trouble is that in Singapore they basically think, oh no, I've got some more money. I can last another six months. Correct. And the thing is, if your business model screwed, your business model yeah, screwed, exactly, yeah. giving you more money for the six months just to prove your business model screwed again uh, doesn't yeah. really help anybody. You should basically close it down, restart it, and do something else. If it's failed, it's failed. Yeah. Do something else. Do something else. Do something else. Use that money to do a different startup. Don't just flog a dead horse. If there's no money coming in, there's no clients coming in, there's no traction coming in, yeah. don't do it. Do it something else instead. Yeah. You definitely have a lot of feelings on today. It's supposed to be a good thing though because um, Singapore is considered one of the, the better uh, advanced ecosystem for startups to try. Oh, that, but it turns out to be, what? it's a problem right now it's because right. it gives a lot of people the, the, the dreamy factor yeah. about oh, I can continue like what you mentioned. But also, plus, I mean, entrepreneurs in Singapore have the benefit of living at home with their parents. You know, they're still living at home with their parents in their mid thirties, a lot of them, whereas someone like myself don't. So expat entrepreneurs are actually taking more risk. I come over here, yeah. if I lose my yeah. if I lose my funding, if I lose, you know, all Correct. my clients and black marketing, I don't really, I can't go back to my parents and say I'd like to you know, sleep in the spare room because my you know It's too comfortable in the UK. Yeah. Whereas too... you know, I'm in Singapore, yeah. just like I moved out when I was twenty years old from Newcastle to London in the UK yeah. and then basically if I didn't get a job I was lacing on the on the yeah, I mean, We all know where you know, you have to go there and do it, you have to take some risk. Also, I mean the Singaporean entrepreneurs are known to be kind of more risk Converse. Correct. They're not really going out there and you know, breaking the, the bottle, which is why you don't have many success stories here. Yeah. There's lots of people trying to do things, but not yeah. necessarily thinking about is there a need for this. So, so you're you're saying that a lot of the locals here are not burning their bridges behind and maybe too comfortable. Yeah. Could that be uh, that lead to the reason why we have not seen a category king or right. uh, a unicorn? unicorn. unicorn here. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Even people like Grab, you know, they're lazy, they're basically burning money left, right, and centre. You know, there's basically lots of people just burning money left, right, centre. It's easy to burn money left, yeah. right, and centre and lose yeah. money and lose money and lose money. I don't want to do that. If you, I give you a million know. dollars, yeah. correct? You know, yeah. give me a million dollars, I can lose that. That's great. I yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nice. yeah. Ten years, fantastic. Give me a million dollars. I don't know what I mean. But, but Grab is. Yeah, but Grab is a very tricky thing. Like, uh, don't mind me saying, actually, Grab it's it's a Malaysia startup. Yeah, that's just true. that they are based in Singapore. Yeah, Singapore yeah. In Singapore, we like to take that as a reference. Oh yeah, Grab is local, so closest to being Precisely, there isn't unicorn. Other, yeah. Because there isn't any others, is there? It's like, you know, Edward Sa- Saverin's here, he's got his billion dollars trying to invest, and even he can't get any, can't find any unicorns, can he? Yeah. He's done a unicorn, so he's the ultimate unicorn, hasn't he? He's in the certificate, from your opinion, do you think there's a chance for Singapore to have our very own? Of course, yeah, of course, because the amount of people trying, it's wonderful the amount of people trying, and the government clearly get it, and yeah. local entrepreneurs get it, and VCs get it. Yeah. So yeah, without a shadow of doubt, you know, there's got to be a time when people actually do strike okay. rich. It's just a matter of kind of like just getting the right ideas. So, Lots of ideas here. Who are, as we when we met at the yeah. at the Yes Forum, yeah, yes, lots of right. people with some great ideas that just yeah. like you look at them and you go, that's that's uh, lots of people with really really bad ideas. Yeah. Yeah. And you look at them and go, why did you think of that? There's no market right. there whatsoever. Right. Yeah. Um, and basically, they haven't really thought through the market, the competition, where they're right. going to get money from. Correct. They just think, oh yeah, we'll be like another Twitter, we'll lose billions of dollars or Snapchat, <laughs> we'll lose billions of dollars, yeah, yeah, and then we'll float on the fucking stock exchange. It's just yeah. not going to happen in a million years. You actually have to make money. We will. Yeah. And I funded it myself. Yeah. You know, you fund it through organic sales, then you fund it, yeah. keep on funding it, and that's the way you ultimately take the risk because you basically manage your growth. Yeah. You don't grow too fast. You go, yeah, so I must have a thousand engineers. And you go, yeah. Yeah. why do you need a thousand engineers? You've only got like 10 customers. Yeah. You basically yeah. have to manage your growth. And that's right. a, lot of, a lot of Singaporeans make a mistake. A lot of entrepreneurs in general make a mistake, not just Singaporeans. Yeah. In general, come across this in Hong Kong and Australia as well. I go, yes, we're going to employ a thousand people. 
and there's no market for the business model. You have to prove the model works because then then scale. Why do a person take on Carousel at this point? Well, I mean, it, it proves the point, doesn't it? It's like Redmart as well. Redmart's also a great success story in Singapore. Yeah, there's it. That was valued $100 million and then was sold for $20 million because yeah, they just losing yeah. so much money. Yeah, it had to yeah. be rescued before it went bust. Yeah. And it's like, Redmart. Yeah, it's <laughs> a red mark against yeah. Redmart. It's Carousel, how can, I'm not sure how Carousel can possibly lose money, but it's obviously haven't thought it through. They've employed too many engineers. Correct. And you get the same thing. And you hear all the time saying, oh, we need to employ 100 engineers. You go, really? You're yeah. engineers? They, they have the engineers. most expensive place in the world to hire engineers, <laughs> Singapore. They have that amount, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, why hire them in Singapore? With all due respect to Singapore, it's the most expensive place because engineers is, know it. here yeah. they can charge double the amount that you have. You can get someone like the same person in Vietnam or Philippines yeah. or correct, correct, elsewhere yeah, because they know that there's basically there's no other engineers. Yeah. Uh, you have come across a lot of different portfolio. Uh, probably there are some that you think that is really potential that have a chance over a period of time to become a unicorn. Is there one or two in your mind that you think? Not that come to mind. No. Okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, but maybe like well, there will be. I mean, there, there will be. You have I to believe, maintain yeah. because merely by doing so much, you're gonna get lucky at some point. Luck. I don't mean like fictional luck. I mean yeah, the harder right. you work, yeah. the more risk you take, the luckier you become. Exactly. Yeah. Because that you you make your own luck. Let's not kill yeah. ourselves. You made your luck. I made yeah. my luck yeah. by working yeah. hard. You don't just yeah. get it by going. Oh yes, yeah, so this is a great yeah. idea. Let's let's get funding. Yeah, that, that's all. The numbers are big. Hard luck. Okay. Hard work. From the survey that I've done, uh, there are easily like 55 startups per week in Singapore alone. There are a lot of new VCs, angel investment, venture there that pops up out of nowhere over the last 18 months. Mm. And we are dubious about it. Mm. You know there's really a lot. Yeah. We ourselves, we also do a lot of homework oh, of on yeah, We yeah, did, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So a lot of them basically, we have no idea where they come from. And we do a Google search, there's so much information. So. You have something to say on this part? You want to address to this one? Well, you can obviously always look at their LinkedIn profiles and look at how they, who the connections you've had. We try, we try, yeah. Yeah, no, totally. You, you, you're right to be skeptical because you don't know where these people are coming from, where the money's coming from. Correct. If they've actually got money, but there's just some all, you know, all hot air. Correct. I mean, there are obviously some obvious examples out there, but you know, you, Singapore is competing with like Hong Kong, yeah. and Cal, and Jakarta, and Bangkok, yeah. and Manila, yeah. and other places in the whole of Asia, the Pacific, Shanghai, yeah. for example, yeah. in competing for the same kind of money. So the people are looking at where you want yeah. to go. You know, what kind of tax breaks you're getting yeah. for giving away some of your money basically and it's focusing on those areas. I mean, Singapore does a very good job in attracting entrepreneurs here who've got money to fund other places and giving tax uh, rebates and uh, incentives right. to actually do so yeah. so it's a great opportunity to do so and yeah, we've been attracting a lot of tenants definitely mm. over the past few years. I saw one that went viral in Facebook YouTube mm. which is a, a, a message by Jim Rogers which is the economist mm. he mentioned that yeah the, the crisis will come end of the year what is your personal take on that? And should we as entrepreneurs be concerned about it? You know, I mean, uh, no. Any entrepreneur actually sees you see any recession as an opportunity. To. So if you do something that is actually cleverer, nimbler, nichier than somebody else, you can actually thrive. Some of the best yeah. businesses in the world have gone through recessions tougher, well, and better yes. than anything else. And so now I wouldn't worry about what might happen. Yeah. You can never worry about what might happen. Yeah, not worry about it. You can focus on yeah. today, focus on okay. delivering today, focus on getting a good business today, yeah. focus on your market today, yeah. make sure there's a revenue stream today, yeah. and basically invest, invest in yourself, invest in your infrastructure, invest okay. in your brand as well, yeah. your personal brand yeah. and your company brand, because that will then weather any particular thing. Saying there's a recession coming to Singapore, the last three or four years, yes. and it hasn't come. There's like a depression coming. We, we've been hearing that. <laughs> it's like, and you know, still China's economy is growing by seven yeah. percent. Still Vietnam's economy is growing yeah, by six percent. Still Myanmar, when I was last week, last year, last week, that's right. Their economy is going up by seven percent, and yeah. Singapore is investing billions into Myanmar. And they're doing it for a reason because yeah. Myanmar is thriving, and thriving. Vietnam is thriving, yeah. and places like you know, the places that are linked to Singapore, yeah. a part of ASEAN, are yeah. thriving. So it's like. There's not going to be uh, that recession when the whole of Asia thing is basically yeah. where we all should be targeted because yeah. we're in lovely Singapore, which is yeah. central to the whole of Asia Pacific. Yeah. You can easily go, if your market's slowing down here, I mean, I travel all over the place. I was in Auckland last week, well into the week before. Yeah. I was in uh, Perth the week before that. I'm in Brisbane next week. I was in Myanmar last week. Yeah. You travel around because it's everything's near. You've got the best yeah. airport in the world in Changi Airport. Yeah. You can travel anywhere. You've seen the lot. planes yeah. <laughs> everywhere. So don't say, I can't, oh, I can't find any clients in Singapore. It's like, well, okay, go to KL, go to Jakarta. Yeah, go, to, you know, yeah. go, go to Bali, go, no, go to that. It's like, <laughs> so many places you can go. Seriously, yeah. if you have a good business model, 
you can survive anywhere. You are thriving. Yes, you have to take a risk. Yeah, we yes, have you have to leave your mother's yeah. bedroom. Yes, you have to put some money in and actually say, I'm going to go and live in Ho Chi Minh. <laughs> and it's going to cost me you know, yeah, a tenth of the cost of yeah. living in Singapore, but I'm going to yeah. take a risk and see if the market's over there. Yeah. Or go to someone like Myanmar, where yeah. actually they're investing billions, and yeah. Singapore itself is investing in billions and will help you go there. You get the Singapore government now and say, I want to go to Myanmar, they will help you. Yeah. They're the third largest investor in Myanmar, China, America, Singapore. They definitely saw You something. think about that. Yeah, That's yeah, punching exactly. above their weight. Yeah. I was at a forum last week. It was organized by Singapore government. Yeah. It's good. Supposedly ASEAN forum, right? And they didn't mention any other ASEAN countries. They're just Singapore and Myanmar. Are we? That was because that's the power of Singapore. So you've got the best country, the most powerful country in the world, with the best, most amount of money and yeah. influence more to the points. Yes. Well, it doesn't have any enemies. Right. You, know, you think about you think about all the other countries in Asia. Yeah. They all have some kind yeah. of enemies fighting yeah. somebody. Yeah, yeah, Singapore yeah. doesn't yeah. have that with everybody. We're friends with everyone. Precisely. Yeah. And you've got India on the, on, you know, growing massively. You've got China growing massively. Same they are. Well. They are. There's no recession. Two countries to watch. There's not a recession. I, you know, dismiss anything like that. And even if there was a recession, go where somewhere there isn't a recession. There's never been a recession in Australia. Australia's having a hard time at the moment, but I'm getting clients out of Australia. I was okay. in Auckland last week. They're supposed to be having a tough time. Yeah. I'm getting clients out of New Zealand. So you have a good product and a good service. Exactly. You yeah. will survive and you will thrive. It's about being nimble, about being niche, about give someone what they want as exactly. well. Don't make up something and say, say, I think people want this and there's no, yeah. nobody wants that. They might want this though. You've got to go where the money is ultimately. You can't be a Twitter and a snap yeah. as much as we might like to be. You can't rely on being a unicorn. You've actually got to fund yourself ultimately. Okay. And that's the key, I think, to every entrepreneur. As you know yourself with your fantastic new business, and yeah. my business as well, it's all about you've got to fund yourself. And entrepreneurs like us, basically, there's nothing much for us to worry. Focus believe on the product. Believe in your brand. Believe in your brand. Believe in your brand. personal brand. Yeah. Believe in your company brand. And believe in your offering. And that's the true test. When a recession comes yeah. and your offering fails, then you've basically sorted yourself out and you have to basically reinvent yourself as something else completely different and think of a different entrepreneur. Think of a different business. I mean, most entrepreneurs are multiple entrepreneurs. Yeah. They don't just have one or two ideas. They have like lots of ideas. Okay. And it's, you've got to focus. You have lots of ideas. I have lots of ideas all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah business here, business there. Yeah. And you have to like, think it through and think, is there a market for this Correct. business? Just yeah. because I like a hairdressing service in Singapore, I like it to. wouldn't yeah. have much of a service. Yeah, you wouldn't go, <laughs> I wouldn't go. Yeah, I'd yeah. go, but nobody else would go. So yeah. it'd be a really niche service. It wouldn't last Correct. very long, you yeah. know? So you have to kind of think it through. Um, I'm very convinced. Thank you so much for your time, Pleasure. Chrissy. You hear it personally from him. Premiership Hour. Uh, remember the two things we always say, uh, both fit in or nothing, life is short, follow your heart. Thank you once again for our interview. Thank Pleasure. you. It's good job. Hey folks, thank you all for tuning in. See you guys around.